scripture says he delivered those who for all your lifetime were subjected to fear because of death you know there are some people who cannot even enjoy God's blessings in your lives for fear that tomorrow something evil may come there are some people who cannot even shake hands with everybody for fear that they may be shaking a witch who may change their destiny so even when somebody is coming to clean their face they think they are coming to change their but when you become a child of God you are no longer a slave to fear uh, and that's what the choir is singing I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God. I want you to just tap somebody with your shoulder and say, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Uh, for I am a child of God. Oh, praise be to God. So you can eat the palm oil that your auntie gave you. It's not witchcraft. Your mother gave you palm oil, you threw it away when you came to the town. Because you fear witchcraft. If your mother would kill you, would have killed you long before. It's not when now you have grown, your, your bones are so strong, you can't even bite. You could have killed you when you were soft and succulent. We are no longer slave to fear. For we are God's children. Can you say a big amen? Amen. Well, we have been speaking for some time now on a new song. Tell somebody a new song. A new song is a song you can sing which is different from your situation. Let the witch say, I am strong. That's a new song. So if you're weak, and you say you are strong. You are singing a new song from your situation. Let the poor say, I am rich. You are singing a new song. A new song is calling those things that be not as though they were. And you friend, and for the Easter and last week we talked about the resurrection and Easter. so we didn't continue but I want to bring your mind back to what we've been speaking on the new song so father we ask that you give us insight depth sight Insight and far sight into your word. Breathe into us the breath of life that we might become living souls. Let us be able to comprehend that thou saith the Lord. Let's cut the revelation of your word that we can 
live therein and not dash your foot against the stone. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So for a recap, we ended a couple of weeks ago on Psalm 8 and verse 2. Psalm 8 and verse 2. Uh, where he says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordained praise to silence the enemy. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordained praise. And so we say that perfect praise is an ordained strength. And now what did want to say? I did and then yeah, a ready a yeah, what did a free and it's an ordained strength to silence or steal the enemy. A yeah, and what dear and and was not good to a ready ma or town for no okana. No, anytime you lift perfect praise is God's ordained strength to silence the enemy. We're peja. But there were two folds of enemies he listed in um, Psalm 8 and verse 2. He and said, The enemy and the adventure. And the adventure. Has ordained praise to silence both the enemy and the adventure. And so we say that the enemy, according to the dictionary, it's your foe, an adversary. An opponent, a rival, nemesis. Nemesis are long standing rivals or arch enemy. Long standing rivals, long standing arch enemy. Antagonists, antagonists. A combatant, a challenger, somebody who challenges you in everything, a competitor, a competitor. An opposer, when we talk about an enemy, somebody who opposes you. A hostile party. A party that are always hostile to you. God's ordained strength is to silence them and steal them. Praise. Amen. And then an avenger, we said, was a person who exact punishment or wants to inflict harm or injury on you wrongly. Praise is God ordained strength to silence such people in your life. And we also discover that God never ordained praise because he needs it. He didn't ordain praise because he needs it. God did not create praise because he needs it. But he commands us to praise him because we need it. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Because if he really needs our praise, so nyame ampara so nya ya ya ya. Or if he just need praises, then the angelic voices are enough to praise him. So ya ya ne ya nyame anko so na boku bebebe a wani the dead day wo ho so we beto ndume yi na ye. But if you put like ato kwame na he and kwame se for kind voices praising God. So ufa mama mi enu eni bom se wo fa nyi ya mi ya. It's nothing compared to any voice of angels. Yet God commands such people even to praise him. Amen. Those with cruel voices are commanded to praise God. And those with good voices, we are commanded to praise God at all times. Praise does more than honoring God. It brings great disaster to the enemy and the avenger. Through, through perfect praise, damage is done to the kingdom of darkness. Okay, that is the recap of what we have learned uh, the, uh, the two weeks ago. But today, we want to speak about the reason and the purpose of praise. The reason and the purpose of praise. Tell somebody the reason and the purpose of praise. And there's a powerful scripture in Amos chapter 9 and verse 11 and 12. Amos yep, yep. 9, 11 and 12. Yes, Amos. It says, in that day, in that in that day, there's a day is coming. The day was not yet then. But the day was yet to come. In the time of Amos. And God said in that day. I will raise up the tabernacle of David. That is falling. And close up the bridges thereof. And I will raise up its rooms. And I will build it as it as in the days of old. In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the bridges thereof. I will raise up his rooms. I will build it as in the days of old. So we see here a prophetic promise to restore David's fallen tabernacle. So through the prophet Amos, God is saying, is giving us a promise, a prophetic promise to restore the David tabernacle that has fallen down. So you, you ask, what is a tabernacle? Because if God says, I'll restore David's fallen tabernacle, the first question you should ask is that, what is a tabernacle? The tabernacle is a place of dwelling. And uh, the Jews believe that that is where God dwells amongst them. The sacred confined place where God dwells. So when Israel camped, those days when they were traveling in the wilderness, wherever they were camped, 
And see, your brand is a two pine, a free museum, a bar, but I said, No, 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 and in the middle they should put the tabernacle the God dwelling place there so it was um, a place it was a sanctuary constructed by Moses Moses which pattern was given to him by God? The way to build it. So it was a place where the Hebrews worship. Through their wandering until they enter the promised land, that place, the tabernacle, the tent where God dwells. And the reason why it was centered in the middle, in the center, symbolizes the idea that God was in the center of his people's lives. God does not want to be at the corner of your life. He wants to be in the center of your life. So the first tabernacle ever built was called the tabernacle of Moses. And God gave him the pattern how it should be built. But it was a pattern from the tabernacle in the heavens. But that is not what we are talking about today. After the tabernacle of Moses, where the ark of the covenant of God was put, showing God's presence, now after traveling in the wilderness until they came to Canaan, remember there was one priest, Eli, whose children would not walk with God. And did vile things. And for the first time, the ark of the covenant was taken from Israel. It represented God. And the Philistine captured the Israelis' God. When your God is captured, you are in big trouble. And if anybody can capture your God, you are left with nothing for defense. So when they captured God, they went to put it in the house of Dagon, the god of the Philistine. And they locked the two gods there. And that was a mistake. Because the God of the heavens is the God above all gods. So when they locked the Ark of the Covenant in Dagon's room, the fetish priest was coming the next day to see what has happened. When they opened the door, their god Dagon has fallen flat in his face to the act of God. So they thought it was a mistake. Maybe they shut the door too strong. 
So they set him back again. Who did this mistake? And so he left again. The second day when he came. Dagon had not just fallen in his face again. But both of his hands were chopped off. His head was cut off. God declaring that he is the head of all principalities Hallelujah. and power. And that no God can receive any glory from human that he made so the very hands of Dagon was chopped off the end of the story is that they have to put that, uh, the ark of the Lord on a new cart driven by um, um, cows and they said because everybody there was smitten by boil. From the king to the servant. So they did the Bansiri thing. Take this God back to where he came from. Don't tell me that the devil doesn't have power. He has power. He knows things. But he's only limited. So they said, if you put the ark of God behind this cow, if he's the God of gods, the cows themselves will go back to where this God comes from. Because all his handiworks praise him. The cow moons of God at every morning that he's great. The birds sing his praise. All the animals know that God is God above all God. Hallelujah. And then keep on moon, what you know yet? And no man so told you, you know yet? And that done done, what you know yet? You mean something you mean not yet? You mean it's a sun sun, and then you go for now. Oh, brother, you know so. To make the long story short. Sir, something to me, what it's up on. The cows headed straight to Israel. And that is when David had to build the tabernacle. So the tabernacle where David built a tent. Where he put this ark. Became the second tabernacle after Moses. The tabernacle of David. Now David in Tomadino. It what gives the church its very foundation. It gives the church its very foundation. It is a shadow of a type of freedom. And that we have to come directly into God's presence without partitions. The first Tabernacle had partitions. Uh, the holy place, the holy of holies. But this tabernacle of David had no partitions. And to Madaina Edi Kaino and the Chemuum, Crom Crombia, Crom Cromo, Crom Crombia, Nansonia David, S. C. and Edi, and the Chemupia Renim. So it is in this tabernacle of David that we learn how to worship and praise God with joy and in the spirit. So when God says, I will bring back, I will restore the tabernacle of David that has fallen, it meant a continuous praise. 
and so young Continuous praise. May the David to my dino or some to my dino Bubunu may say Sinu and Nemo Bium, I shall look at Naman. I said, and let's sit down now. Let's just say, young Pompa, you let us say a baby. Let me show you why it's continuous praise. Mention Saint Tens and Saint Yakupa, you baby. If you have your Bibles, one Chronicle sixteen thirty seven. One Chronicle sixteen thirty seven. Chronicle near the kind a tea do ancient. So when David put this ark in the tent, which became the tabernacle of Moses, so he left there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord Ashaph and his brethren to minister before the ark continually as every day required. Continually. He left some people who will worship continually every day. And today we hear in Tomadan Vienu, or my Bilmo Wahwa, De Biara da Wadi or Song Abemonia Kupana, won't trust him. In First Chronicles 15, 1 through 17, and verse also 27 tells us, because of time, it tells that he appointed 288 prophetic singers. 288 prophetic singers. And four thousand musicians. Oh, Yanko Ponga, and Jum Tofu, and come send Jum Tofu. I have your new and your watch and watch and offer one of our boys and Kunso and Pim and Yenu. Four thousand young Pim, you know, and we do Pim and Nine. Hallelujah. Amen. Four thousand musicians and Pim Nine and Jum Tofu, two hundred and eighty eight prophetic singers. And come, sir, and come to Funo. I have, I have you know any of your watching, watching to make petition. So, one for at this to give thanks, one for that, and to praise the Lord day and night 24 7. No one for you, you know, young Copon, and a pa, a ya, and a jay, ah, one chasm. Wow, say wow. Wow. This was unlike anything that has ever been done in Israel's history. But that was God's plan for his people. David appointed 4,000 singing musicians in the David tabernacle. First Chronicles 23 and 5. Chronicles 23 and 5. Somebody read that for me. Since we don't have the screen today. First Chronicles Somebody. 23 and 5. Moreover, 4,000 were porters, 4,000 praised the Lord with instruments which I made, said David. To praise the way. 4,000 people to sing God's praise. And Jum Tofu and Pim Nine, they be say, Sign the pain of my former self. Among Bon Jum and Fayo or Yanko Puan yet, I bring now. So during David's reign, they <laughs> prayed and sung praises 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. And the bad night David up here on Heneno, Sir Nippa, Adam to four and Pim Nay, what to Jum de Munina and the young Noachiaso. The act of the covenant was present there. Sam Benona, Yanko Papa Madacana, Etting and me and in Papa no Ewo. But there's one thing I want you to note here. I did not put on Bessie in my answer. Very, very important. Idia means says, very, very important. And who you have a papa. As Idi Amin would say, this is very, very important. Very, very important. That during this time of David's reign, of David's day and night worship, there was no war in Jerusalem. For 33 years, no war. The enemy was silent. Uh, 
praise will silence your enemies. There was time of peace only in the city. David was victorious continually in these years. So God said, I will restore the tabernacle of David which is falling. In other words, I am going to restore continuous praise. David So, so in, what we are saying in, in fact is that if if the tabernacle is a dwelling place of God, and if God is speaking about restoring the David's falling tabernacle, which was a 24-7 continuous praise, it simply means that God will inhabit the praises of his people. Uh, anytime you make praise, God is there. But we read in Amos. Remember, we're reading Amos chapter 9, verse 11. Where he says, uh, verse 11, says, I'll restore the fallen. But the next verse, verse 12, Amos 9, 12. He tells us the purpose, the reason why he is restoring that. Praise 24 hours praise. So Amos 9 12. He said that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And of all the heathen. Which is Call, which are called by my name, say the Lord, that do it this. So he tells us the reason why he will restore the fallen tabernacle of David to po so that they may possess the remnant of Edom. Now, when you look at the word possess, in the English, it simply means to cast out. Cast out. To consume. To destroy. To disinherit. And occupy by driving out the previous tenants. So the tenants that were dwelling there to possess me, you are driving out any previous tenants for you to come to take over. So, so what is God saying? I will restore the tabernacle of David. David in other words, I'm going to restore a 24 hour praise. So that the praise will become a tool to dislodge the enemy. Remove, praise will become a tool to remove any power, any authority. That occupy your life before that time. So, whatever has been occupying your life, whatever has taken position and authority in your life, your health, your finances, your marriage. As you lift up praise, you will dislodge that authority. Come on. Oh, I just wanted to start off for two seconds and lift up praise. Come on, just, just two seconds and lift up some praise. Come on, come on, come on just lift some praise. Come on, dislodge your praise will dislodge this inherent. Come on, just open your mouth and lift some praise. Come on, just lift some praise. Just lift some praise in two seconds. Just lift some praise. 
Just lift some praise. Come on, just lift some praise. Come on, lift some praise. Whatever is happening in your life, whether negative, you can lift up praise to this Lord. Whoever is occupying my life, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Oh, Rabba Kabasa. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. So that is what God's plan is all about. Why is praise so much important? Because it's a slap to the devil's face. Why does it dishonor the devil? It's because that is what he wanted the most. He was created Lucifer. With praise in him. All the pipes and the organs of praise was inside him. There were three archangels. Archangel Michael, the warrior. Archangel Gabriel, the messenger. And Archangel Lucifer. And Lucifer, so you are the praise angel. But he converted the praise for himself. And so he wanted to build his throne just above the thrones of God. And he was cast down to earth. And the reason why God made you. When he was cast down to earth. All the things he was made with. The pipes, the organs, the temples, the symbols. When he fell, it crashed on the earth and mixed the earth and the dust of the earth. So it was then that God created man by taking the very dust which was the scattering dust of the praise and the worship of Lucifer and form man out of this dust of the ground and breathe into man so Revelation said he created us for his praise he didn't man is a replacement of Lucifer no 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 we are not Obonsam. before he became Obonsam, he was Lucifer so we are not replacement of Satan we are a replacement of Lucifer Lucifer no ah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise be to God on high. Amen. So, when you praise God, and you say, What are you doing? I just said, What are you doing? Baby, lie. No one can. I have so cool. Now, I'm going to have a scholarship. No one worried. No. I read it. But I could also say, What are you doing? We're amazing. If you want to say, When you're a fine girl, chick, you'll be. If you want to see the classic, it's a slap in his face. So, are you understanding? So, Lucifer thought he was the one to praise him. But when he turned around, God has stripped him off all the dust and formed you and I as his replacement. So, anytime you praise God, it's a slap on the devil's face. I don't have too much time, but let me read the psalm. I have just 10 more minutes. Let me read the psalm to you. Psalm 149. I'll tell somebody you are a replacement of Lucifer. You are created with praise to God. Oh, he made us. Thou has created all things for thy pleasure. They are and were created. We were created for God's pleasure. 
to praise and worship his holy name forever. Oh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 149. And you are her and yet you are no uncle. So he said, Praise ye the Lord. Everybody said, Praise ye the Lord. For I hear ye a moan, I mean. Tell, look at somebody's face, say, Praise ye the Lord. That's all 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 Sing a new song unto the Lord and his praise in the congregation of saints. Hallelujah. The other time, Danu, a friend of mine needed oxygen. No, yeah, so we had to take him to Hamadia. And every one hour that they put the oxygen on him is 100 Ghana cities. Hey, Lord. So the 24 hours, seven days a week, the pain you've given it to me free. Why am I so ungrateful? Hallelujah. Why do I behave so gently? The Lord. When I come to your house Jesus. and everybody's praising you, and I behave cute because I don't want to lose the boss spray. That I spray myself. And I'm saying, I'm coming home to me. You are a miserable person. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in a dance. Those of you who have never danced. In the house of God. But you dance at funerals. Learn to dance in the house of God. Because God has given you breath. He never gave you a bill. In Job Hopkins Hospital in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. A rich man was operated on. So that he could urinate. And then the doctors came and discharged him. After they saw that the surgery was successful. He was able to urinate by himself. And so they brought him a bill. About 60,000 US dollars. The moment he took the bill. He started crying. The doctor said, hey, doctor, we say, Crash it. is the bill too much? Okay, yes, so do we can find some philanthropists and they'll pay it for you. If it's too much, let us know. We can slash it for you. He said, no, doctor. It's not that I can pay. I'm a rich man. I can pay 60000 like that. I'm not crying because I can't pay. But I'm crying because my 67 years that I've united free I have never said thank you to God. When you come, you can pass urine. Nah. You, you pass one and even shake it. <laughs> then you can get all the spare out. Now you and yet you have not said thank you to no. God. So you, so you, you are a miserable person. <laughs> I said you are a miserable person. <laughs> oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise him in a dance. 
When it comes to praising God, dance and praise God. Some of our young people are so cute they cannot even dance. Hey, but get crazy and dance, dance before God. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbal and heart, with the guitar and the timbals and the tambourines. Use it to sing praises to him. For the Lord take get pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Oh, when you praise him, he brings salvation to you. When you praise him, he will bring deliverance to you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Listen. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. When you are sleeping, you can worship the Lord in your bed. You don't have to get up and pace before God hears you. Even on your bed, you can sing aloud. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Learn to sing aloud on your bed. So that your next door neighbor will hear the praises of God in that room. Hallelujah. Uh, all oh, the next neighbor is hearing every time. Is you, <laughs> your wife, <laughs> and your bed breaking and scratching from today? Let your next door neighbors hear your praise. Why? Hallelujah. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Let the praise of God be in your mouth. Whether it's well or it's not well. Whether you lose a loved one or not. Whether things are hard or things are good. Let the praise of God be in your mouth. Come on. I will just read it. I'll read it next week. I'll continue. So let me just read it and stop. When you praise him, when the praise is in your mouth, he says what? It's a two-edged sword. It's a two-edged sword in your hand. When you put praise in your mouth, it's a two-edged sword. Sick kind. It's a what does it mean? I said yesterday. Your praise is a powerful weapon in your hand. May God make your praise a powerful weapon. So when it becomes a powerful weapon, what does it do? What does it do? It executes vengeance upon the unbelievers and punishment upon the people your praise is that it binds kings with chains and the nobles were fetters of iron 
In other words, when there is no perfect praise in your mouth. Is a two-edged sword that cast every unbeliever, every principality, every power, spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of darkness of this earth. Your praise is a two-edged sword that cast them. But this is what I like this. this is what I like best. It says, it executes upon them the written judgments of God. Yes. I, I throw a honor at them. Amen. Oh, what time for so. Today, Amen. every written judgment on your behalf, whether they go to Supreme Court or High Court, whatever has been written concerning you, it will come to pass. His honor. This honor. I want somebody to read it from your Bible so you don't think it's in my only my Bible. Sometimes, sometimes when I go to America and preach and they, they come and look at my Bible, they say, Is that the same Bible we've been reading? Or, or you have an African Bible. So I want you to read from your own Bible. Can you, can you read it from your own Bible? This owner, read that. Psalm 39. Okay. To execute upon them the judgment written. Good. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. This honor. Have all, all his, his saints. Son, you mean you mean a one a whom you phone in aso. Amen. Oh, son, and you mean you mean son, you mean you mean when you meet the man a who you phone in. Hallelujah. We are who train you with Christ to be sorry. Amen. No, you mean a man when you mean you mean. Hallelujah. So we turn your now ma when the sword now we in Yamia ya and the tembua in Yamia trono. Every tempo. So we get on that. Hallelujah. So we get on that. Also be worried. Amen. Also be wo. Amen. Wo ba kope wo mo mienu. Ya wo pe na Yamia de be mau. Amen. Ya Yamia trono e be be. Amen. Hallelujah. Your enemies and your adventures. Your enemies and your Everybody, <laughs> Come on, sing it, come on. Yeah, you are, yeah, yeah. 